Hello painters and welcome to another week of Watercolours with Caroline. This week we're going to do a stormy sky and a um, sunrise. I know it's a sunrise, the sun's pretty low and there's some shafts of light coming from the sun beneath a very stormy sky. I'm going to use two photos as a reference, they're both by Jay Henley and uh, we're going to do a sort of, they're taken on a a narrow tall format like a cell phone so we're going to do a minus 10 inches by 6 inches the paper so we're going to do a sort of tall narrow format so get your paints ready and you won't need much drawing for this one just a horizon line and let's get started there we go so I have the two photos side by side here and I, I, I really liked how this one had the sort of sun's reflection on the ocean more but I really liked the cool kind of blues in this one. And I liked the trees in this one. And I liked the sun rays in this one. This one didn't have any sun rays. But what I do like about this one over here on the left is the purpley pinky sky at the top. What I don't like about this one is this huge chunk of just gray. I don't think that's very attractive, especially not for painting. So. What we're doing is kind of a hybrid actually. Okay. We're gonna go with this part for most of the painting, but we're going to go with this part up here for the top of the sky. So we have this dark part just coming through here and a bit more light maybe. Okay. And because I think you're going to really hate putting in just a great big clump of gray here. It's not it looks lovely in a photo and the real photo's got more nuance to it um, but um, I think we'll we'll stick with this one most of the time I would like to do the sun rays so what you need to plan is to leave a nice light spot and this one is exactly twice the horizon line I've done one and a half inches up from the bottom on mine so very low and then twice that horizon line is about where this uh, sort of sun behind the clouds is. Now you don't need to circle it or anything. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I'm just circling it so you can kind of see where the, the light is, where you kind of want to leave it white. And then at the very end, we're going to wash out these sun rays at the very, very end. And we're going to be very careful that they come from the sun you can't have any sun rays coming outside of the diameter of the sun it does it's not natural they only sun rays only come from within like the diameter of where the sun would be which is about there it, and we can tell that from the rays if the rays are here we know that behind those clouds that's where the sun is it's, it's very low um, so we'll put that in last so I'm just sort of talking you through the planning steps first and these trees that break the horizon line, we're only going to have three clumps because remember composition is about odd numbers and um, we want a, a papa bear, a mama bear and a baby bear. So a big one, a, a medium one and a small one. And the rest go below the horizon line and very low down. So that's it worked out in this. So that's why good photos are good photos because the composition works out uh, really well in them. So just be mindful of that. Be very mindful. Let me find the center of this photo. Um, that's, I love my quilting ruler because it makes it easy to get. Oh, where am I going? We've got three and three quarters, one and a half and about there. Now there is the center. So the center of the drawing is roughly there without me doing too much complicated math and we don't want to have you don't want to ever have your tree here in the center so be careful to avoid that if anything push this tree over a little bit more so that you don't have something bang in the middle of your horizon line that's just a poor composition and it will focus your eye right there and distract people. So I just want to make all these kind of planning notes just before we start so that you have that information. Um, 
on this one, these were my horrible, let's zoom out again a little bit. These were my horrible attempts at, I really hated them, my attempts at the orangey one. And I, I struggled so much with these. I felt that I went too pink up here, too yellow up here. Uh, this one was a bit better, but I didn't go orangey enough. I really liked the reflection on the water, but I had to put it in afterwards on here because I, I didn't go dark enough. And I had to put some PH Martins white in here because I didn't leave enough white. I just, I struggled with these, but I did, I did sort of move the trees over a little bit into, you know, a couple of clumps leaving this center open. And this one, not one, too close to the center here, really. Should have moved it over a bit. So a couple of things that I didn't, you know, I did, I tried, didn't like very much. Uh, this one here, I, I put, I put these rays too high. The sun wouldn't be that high in the sky for an evening or um, yeah, this would be evening, I think. No, it wouldn't. This would probably be morning. I think this is Piper's Lagoon. Anyway, whatever it is, the sun wouldn't be that high. It would be lower down. So just remember all those things. Um, put these out the way for a moment. And all I've got on here today is my horizon line, which I'll make a little bit darker because I also want to talk to that. I love my quilting ruler because I can just pop it on the paper and I can get my measurement really easily. It's, mine's one and a half inches from the um, tape line, from the tape, which is, if you like to work in centimeters, is on mine four centimeters. Now, my paper is kind of like a, a phone. I like the, the phone photo sort of shape of this, lots of narrow narrowness. So my paper is six and a half inches by, I don't have any more inches left here, by six and a half. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches by ten inches. So six and a half by ten, my little piece of paper, and I've come up one and a half inches, or what did I say in centimeters? Um, four centimeters from my tape edge. So my tape edge is here. So I always measure from the edge of the tape. Now that's all I've got on there. And I want to keep, grab my eraser, where my trees are going. I'm just going to erase that horizon line a little bit because I don't want the line of the pencil showing through the trees. Even though the trees are going to be dark and silhouetted, it's quite possible that my pencil line might show through it. I don't want it to. So just where I'm kind of going to put the trees, I'm just going to erase it a little bit so I, I can find it. Right. Here we go. Wet the paper. We're going to work wet and wet. We're going to work in three distinct layers, possibly two if you go dark enough, but probably three. So let's get my nice big wetting brush. And make sure you get your paper good and wet. If it dries up, you lose that soft cloud look. I'm using my number 10 brush. I should be probably using a bigger brush, but I didn't get it out. So I just grabbed the biggest one that was to hand. Make sure I get this paper good and soaking wet. Which means I go over it a few times. And then I tip it to see it's wet everywhere. And I'll zoom in. Now I know you can't see the whole paper, but we'll work on it a bit at a time. And I'm going to start down by the horizon with the pale colors. I'll grab my Kleenex. Now I'm just going to, with my Kleenex, I just get the tape dry so I don't get any runbacks from the edge. Make sure it's good and wet and shiny. Right, so I've still got my number 10 brush because my first wash, I want it to be good and loose. And I, I need to make a little mark on the edge of the paper for me to remind me, leave a light space for your sunshine. So mine's going to be three inches up. 
So not on the paper, just on the tape, I'm going to make a little arrow to remind myself just in here by that arrow, I need to leave a nice white spot. And in the, oops, so, so stuck to it now. Also, the black cloud kind of comes down just above that. So oh, I got a lovely wet piece of paper now. Get a bit more wet on there. I suck some up with my paper. And let's go in with uh, a light yellow. Azo yellow is my favorite because it's nice and transparent. And it's, it's a very neutral yellow. It's not a warm one. It's not that cool. But lemon yellow is a little bit um, opaque. That's the word I'm looking for. So I like it more transparent. So down by the horizon, even in this one, there's quite a nice yellow reflection down here. And I've put, I put a, a black line where the horizon line is on this one. So let's get that in first, this really lovely lemon glow. And remember your silhouetted trees are going to go over that, so you don't need to worry about them. I'm going to take it down to the tape because again, I'm going to put my silhouetted trees over it. And you can see that that, that yellow, that azo yellow looks quite lemony. It might be just my light and turn that up a bit. Now that, that sort of yellowy look continues up into the sky a little bit. And there's quite a bit of white. And remember up here at about three inches, I have that, um, I need that white glow of the sun, but around it, I need a bit of yellow just around it. There's also a few bits of stronger yellow breaking through these clouds. So I'm going to get, you can either mix a little bit of red with that yellow to make an orangey yellow, or I'm just going to grab a bit of gamboge because gamboge is an orangey yellow. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that gamboge in here, a little bit by that sunny spot. And a little bit down here. Now you'd be surprised how light, you might not be, you've got lots of experience. This gamboge will get a lot lighter when it's dry. I just want that little bit of warmth that's going to peek through. I'm going to put that in. And now it looks very, very bland and yellow at the moment, but this is all going to be behind a lot of the other colors. Now, most of the other colors I used were fairly cool, except for, let's go to the top of the sky. At the top of the sky, I put in a little bit more purple. And my top at the corner is already drying, so I'm going to wet that up a little bit. So you know the purple we used last week, which was um, the cobalt blue and the rose, the quinacridone rose. So we're going to make a, a bluey purple with those two, not too pink, not too pink. I'm being very careful how much rose I add in there. Let me just tiny bit more. And I want to put that in at the top of the sky. Maybe all over because I'm going to come over with the black cloud. Leave a little bit of white showing. So I've got that purple in. These are all going to be under the other colors. And I'm in the middle of my sky. And I can, I can put a little bit of purple in here. I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this purple a little bit more gray and I'm going to do that by grabbing some of my yellow mixed with gamboge and a little bit more blue. Just a little bit of that blue and a little bit of that yellow and I'm going to go a little bit more gray down here. If your paper's nice and wet this will all be very soft. Don't worry about this mixing with the yellow because it will make gray mix with your yellow. That will be fine. And then you can either use Prussian or phthalo blue. 
I'm going to use I'm going to use phthalo blue because it's most of it's going to be covered up with dark cloud and um, I want to put some phthalo blue in as well before everything dries up and it's getting it's getting close to put a bit up here this is all going to be underneath the dark clouds so I don't have to worry too much about it and then down here I'm going to go down the page a little bit down close to the horizon I'm going to put in a bit more of the phthalo blue or you can use Prussian blue it's fine to use either one I'm not going to go down to the horizon line at this point I can do that in the next layer I'm just going to put in a little bit and I don't want to go over the yellow too much it's okay to have a little bit of green in the sky that's all right but too much is it just doesn't really work sometimes you do get a green tinge to the sky and that's okay So this, this first layer is all the lights. These are all the lights. i just pull back a little bit. The light colors that are behind, behind these dark clouds. So we're just putting in what's behind. I'm going to just grab some Prussian blue. So you can, it's very similar to the uh, phthalo blue. It's a cool blue. It has, I think the one I have, has a little bit of black mixed with the pigment and it's just slightly slightly darker than the phthalo. I'm just putting it on there so you can see the slight difference between phthalo and Prussian. The the Prussian's just a little bit more dark that's all. I don't want to put too much in I'm just kind of showing you what the color is. Now at this point um, I do not want to go to the hairdryer just yet it's drying up down here, but in the middle here, it's still kind of diffusing out into the water. The colors are diffusing together. Some of the colors are separating beautifully. And I want that to all happen before I arrest it with the hairdryer. So I'm just gonna let you do yours and, um, you know, catch up with me. Right, that's pretty good and dry and it's very very important that when we're working in layers like this and we're going to wet this layer it has to be perfectly dry like completely dry you need to test it make sure there's no damp feeling feels warm and dry and the paper's flattened out again and that means the pigments are sealed into the grain of the paper and they shouldn't lift unless you have a very poor quality paper or um, an extremely liftable pigment one that floats on the top more than sinking in but usually usually it will be fine so how are we doing are we ready for the next layer we're going to do the the next layer of dark over the top of this layer and that's the way you can use your blues and your bluey grays over the yellow without getting the green look and especially if you use a little bit of violet over the yellow you'll just get a gray look to it especially like in this one if you use violet over the yellow you'd get a lovely gray look but we're going to go with the more bluey one and I think as long as you keep some very clean water it's probably good to have our color mixed up first and I need to protect my paper let's get my paper towel protect the paper while I mix up the storm colors the storm clouds and just check my notes this time instead of improvising a nice big brush so we're going to use the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make the gray and then a little bit of alizarin crimson or quinacridone rose to warm up the gray now whatever i had here i think was phthalo blue i can use that I don't have to clean it off it's going to put my ultramarine blue on the top and i want a lot i want nice dark clouds 
I'm getting quite a bit of ultramarine and then burnt sienna. We, we don't want it brown. We want it gray, nice dark gray clouds. So don't add too much brown or you'll have brown clouds. Just mix in the burnt sienna until you have a, a dark gray. You can also use uh, Payne's Grey for this too, if you want to. I use Payne's Grey sometimes uh, and for mixing black. I avoid using it too much in cloudy skies because I've noticed with painters that use mostly just Payne's Grey in cloudy skies, it's very boring. They're always just Payne's Grey, but I am, I'm putting a little Payne's Grey here uh, with that. I'm going to add a little bit of Prussian to it. And I'm going to add a little bit of rose to that to make a, a sort of a violet gray. That's a bit warmer. So but your paint's gray is very useful if you if you modify it, if you add things to it. So I have that the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna, which both granulating, they will probably separate, put on wet paper. I'm going to add just a little bit. You can add a alizarin crimson or rose. I'm going to try a little bit of alizarin crimson with that one. The reason I switched to rose is alizarin crimson has always been a bit of a color that fades. They've made a permanent alizarin crimson now, but it's, it's not as permanent as um, quinacridone rose. And quinacridone rose is just such a beautiful, cool rose. It can make any color. So we've got we've got a couple of nice dark dark grays made there. I'm also going to use a little bit of just Prussian blue. I might need a little bit that's just Prussian. Let's put that here. So I've got some variety. I might, I'm just looking at this one here. I might add a little bit more Prussian to that Payne's gray one. I got a dark, cool blue. That's a, it's quite a lot of cool colors in, in this one here. Right, we got those ready. Take off my protective paper. And make sure that the water you use now is really, really clean. No paint in it. And I've switched to a clean I found my brush, switched to a clean brush that's got no paint in it. So when I'm wetting my sky now, gently, so I don't lift any paint. I shouldn't do, but I still want to be gentle. Now it's only going to wet down to the horizon line. Not going to wet the whole paper this time. And that will give you a horizon line now if you stop your water and that's where a flat brush like this is easier because you can put it on your horizon line. Let's zoom in and put it up so you can see the horizon line. If you get your brush on the horizon line and pull it along that line carefully, you should get a nice straight, straight line there. Make sure it's wet all over. And I've made it more wet at the top of the sky because that's where I'm coming last. And less, slightly less wet at the horizon line because that's where I'm going to start. I, I just find it easier to work that way with little bits of color and then moving towards big color. So I'm going to switch to my number six brush, slightly smaller brush. And down by this horizon line, I want to put in some of the Prussian blue. I have just the Prussian blue. I'm going to see if it's going to look too light as I come along here. It is looking a little bit light, but I'm going to put a little bit in anyway. Remember, I've got my arrow up here for leave, leave, a, leave a light spot. So I'm going to add a little bit of the Payne's Gray to that Prussian and go a little bit darker. That's better. I just dipped in the Payne's Gray mix and now see what I'm doing. I'm going in from either side, thick at the sides and then 
thinning out my brush strokes as I come in. I want to make sure that along the horizon I have a bit of a, a bit of a line so it's visible. I don't want to go all the way along, I want a little bit of a break in the horizon and definitely some um, some light showing through. So what, I, what I've got here is I've got my Prussian blue and I've got my Payne's grey with Prussian blue and I'm kind of dipping in both so that it's not too, too, um, too blue. I don't want it too, too blue. I want it a little bit dramatic. I've got to remember I want it light up here. Now I'm going to dip into my more purpley one that has the ultramarine blue. I'm going to go a little bit more purple up here. Slowly, I've got the number six brush, quite small. Working slowly so I can sort of get some layers happening. I can always put a third layer in if this is, if this is not working. Now, I want to add a little bit more rose to this color, the Prussian and the um, Payne's Gray. I want it a little bit more purpley. I want to add, um, add a little purple tinge coming under here and up here. And pretty soon now, I'm going to have to switch to a bigger brush. So I'm done with my little brush. Maybe looking at my reference picture, I think I need, need a bit more cloud going right across here. A bit more over there. And then I'm going to go take my camera up the sky a bit. Top of my sky is drying off, so still got a clean brush and a lot of water and I want to make sure it's wet enough to move up the page because I want to get some big cloud in going up the page going back to my number 10 brush and my my light spots here I've got my Prussian yeah my Prussian blue it's going to come down here with that and then my purpley my purpley color has a bit of rose in it. Bigger brush, bigger brush strokes. Now I'm going in for the really dark one, the ultramarine blue and the uh, burnt sienna. I'm getting that one in there. A bit, bit of pur more purple in the middle here. More Prussian up here. And this is where it gets looking really ugly. And you're going to think, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. Now, I want to mix up a bit more ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Very little water, not, not mixing much water in with this. Because I want some, I want it nice and thick, the paint. Because I have a nice wet sky. Coming in with thick paint for those clouds. Looks horrible. It looks absolutely horrible. You have to really have faith that it will be fine. And I Getting a little bit more of that purple, adding that in. Don't don't do too much in the way of brush strokes. Don't add too much water, because you'll get um, all the water lifting up the paint, making a mess. So you have to be really really careful. You don't add too much water. And at some point you have to stop because you're just going to lift paint off if you keep going. I'm looking for my fluffy brush. Here it is. 
So with my fluffy brush, I can do a little bit of just fluffing these clouds a little bit. And of course, all down by my horizon is already starting to, it's already starting to dry. What's happening in the middle of my paper is it's a little bit too wet and it will dry up okay, but it's just a little bit too wet. And I'm going to grab a Kleenex. And if at any point you feel you want to get a little bit more white left, if you if you think, oh, I need a bit more light cloud here, especially here where I might have my sun coming through, get your Kleenex and twist it into a, a little point like this. And then you can just gently ease off some some spots where you maybe want a bit more light if you need it. You can manipulate the paint a little bit. Don't do it too much because you'll get some really, really dry patches that you don't like if you do that too much. But you can manipulate the paint slightly if you need a bit more light. I'm gonna where my, my sun's supposed to be. I'm just going to grab a little bit more light in there. And of course you can see my lamp reflecting on the sky, which makes it look very shiny where it's wet. In the photo, there's a little bit of light cloud in here. So I'm just going to very gently ease a little bit more light out there. So what pulls this together at the end and balances it all out is, of course, the little silhouetted trees at the bottom. They, they really balance out all this dark sky that we're putting in there. And we're not going quite as dark as the photo, leaving a little bit more light. And I, I did a... I did a third layer on mine. It's up to you whether you want to put in a third layer. If you didn't go dark enough on this layer, you can. I have a feeling this layer might be, might be dark enough for me. We'll see when it's dry. Where I went with the Kleenex here, I'm going with a very dried off damp brush to just soften that line. I don't want quite such a hard line in there where the light's coming through. I want to soften that off with my brush a little bit. Now, I promise you that you'll probably hate yours at this point because this is the really ugly stage of the stormy sky and you, you will think you've made a horrible mess. But wait until tomorrow. Wait until these colors have really, really dried and melded into your paper and you've got all your um, silhouettes on because it's going to look so different when you see it all completed and all dry and with fresh eyes the next day. So even though mine's still a little bit wet in the middle, I'm going to dry it because I think I think it'll be okay if I dry it right now. And we don't want to sit here all afternoon waiting for paint to dry. 
I'm just going to, I'm going to mute myself again because you don't want to hear the hairdryer. So already now mine has dried. It's looking a lot better than when it was very, very wet. And also you need to kind of pull back and look at the whole thing as a whole to, to really make a decision about it. Now I would probably, probably leave this as it is, but I'm going to go in for one third layer on mine because across this one here, is a really dark bank of clouds and I like how that complements the dark at the bottom and I just want to show you, you could, how you can still do a third layer on this if you wanted to. You don't have to. If you get to this point on yours and you think that's looking okay, that's as much as I want to do with these dark colors, then by all means stop at this stage and we're going to work on we're going to work on the bottom of the ocean dry this is going to be dry brush and and dry work so but i'm going in for one more layer of really dark cloud i want to use the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna i like the way it granulates and i like the oh i haven't put my i'm losing all my protective paper towel there I like the way it separates and granulates these two colors. If you don't like the way they separate and granulate, that's time to maybe use Payne's Gray instead of these two colors. Oh, I put the wrong color in there. I put some green in. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing. I don't care. I'm leaving it in there. See what we get. If I put enough blue and brown in there, it will, it will be happy. Especially if I put a bit of rose, the rose will dampen it down. Lots of blue because I want it really, really um, grey. Maybe a little bit of Prussian. I want this to be a very dramatic layer, so a little bit of Prussian. See how not much water with that? Not dipping my brush in the water very much. I, if I dip it in my burnt sienna, I just dip it in. I don't clean it. I'll clean that up later. Because if I make this too watery, it's it's not going to stand out. It will just dissolve into the wet background. There, that's a good good thick dark mix. I never know what's going to happen. Really, they all turn out differently, and it's it's a game of chance. Right, clean water, clean brush, and I can't just wet where these clouds are going to be because then I will get a straight line here and here where they finish. I have to wet that whole sky again otherwise I will just get a great big water line through the middle of my painting. This is where you have to make sure that it's completely dry or you will start to get lifting especially with the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna right down to a nice straight horizon line. It's lifting a tiny bit, but not enough to affect my, my painting, really. I'm going to work on those clouds along the middle. And just make sure the sides are dry. want my big number 10 brush. I'm going to dry my brush off on my paper towel so it's not full of water and I don't want to be adding lots of water to this and I want to go across with these clouds here that kind of go up big up and around we don't want I don't want a straight line load I'm gonna load my brush with that dark mix I just made and think about the shape I want so I want up and down I'm going to grab a little bit of the other color too that's there, that purpley color. Up and down, down here. Using my brush on its side. Oh, it looks horrible, doesn't it? When it goes on wet, it looks awful. This is when you lose, lose faith in what's happening. 
plus here's a little bit of a a little bit of a break here it comes down here a bit it's already drying right here it's too hard right there I've got my damp brush and I'm easing it in I didn't wet too much at the bottom and it's it's too dry Ease it in and fluff it around. A damp brush to ease that in a little bit. You can do so much with a damp brush, brush that's not got too much too much paint on it and I, I, I really really like the corners to be dark so with my brush on its side I'm grabbing I'll show you what I'm doing I have a fairly fairly dry brush I'm grabbing a bit of this I'm grabbing a bit of this they're fairly dry with my brush on its side I'm just kind of scrubbing with my brush I'm bringing a little bit of dark in from the corners I don't like the corners to be too light it allows the eye out of the painting I don't want to go with a really wet mix for this I want more control my fluffy brush all, all down here is drying way too quickly so again clean my brush dampen it off and fix these areas where it's drying too quickly and put lots of little fluffy clouds in there with this sort of dry brush This is almost dry down here. I'll pull back because so you can see it a little better. And again, all this black dark cloud really stands out because it's wet. As it dries, it really just melts into the background. It's especially over time. It doesn't stay looking like that. So again, I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to let that. I'm actually, going to let that soak in because I know that I can work all the way down here on the dry and it will be fine. I don't need to, um, I don't need to dry it yet. I want to let it soak in properly into the paper and use my fluffy brush again to just soften those edges. And if there's any darker clouds that I want to put in later, I'll put them in on really dry paper and just use a damp brush to ease those little ones in if I feel I need any more down here. My soft fluffy brush. And like I say, I'm not going to go to the hairdry with those. They can, and you probably don't need to either, because when we work down here, it's going to be on dry paper. Now let's zoom in again, go up to, well, maybe I'll zoom out so you can actually see it for the moment. And then I'll zoom in when I get ready to do the, the ocean.
So this, this is the fourth one I have done and I'm just starting to get the hang of it. So please don't be hard on yourselves. It really doesn't always happen the first time. Sometimes if you're lucky, it does and it goes great. Um, I mean, this was my first one and that it looked horrendous when it was wet. I'm not too enamored with it, but but um, it was definitely not my favorite. This was my second one. Didn't like that one at all. I didn't like how these clouds turned out. I put my sun too high. And this was my third one. Still, I still wasn't very happy with it. So it does take time. It really takes time to kind of get the hang of what you want to do. I did like... I think down here my clouds were darker and I kind of liked that. It needed that. So I might, when this is dry, I might need a bit more dark cloud down over the horizon. I think I will. I will keep, a, keep an eye on that. To get the sparkle on the ocean down here, we're going to use a dry brush where we skip across the paper. So any of these colors that I have here are going to be good for the ocean dry brush. I might need more of them though. This is my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm going to add a bit of quinacridone rose to that. And a bit more blue, ultramarine blue. So I've got a, a dark gray that's got a tinge of tinge of um, pink to it, warmth. Right, I think you can see now. So we are going to use, I, what I did was I got a dark mixture of the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna with a little bit of rose to it. And I've got a fairly dry brush, my number 10, and I'm loading it up with the paint but then I want to get a bit of paint off on my towel so it's not too loaded and I usually have a piece I've got a piece of scrap paper here and I want to just test just te oops, sorry you can't see test that I can get dry brush with my my brush if I drag it sideways I'm still going to get a bit more of the paint off because it's quite subtle so what we're aiming for to start is this kind of dry brush coming in at the edge here. Now all along here where you're going to have your silhouetted trees doesn't matter too much about how it goes. You don't have to worry too much. But we're going to start by coming in on dry paper from this side. and uh, I'm kind of lifting it up a little bit so that I've got just kind of the tip because I want a lot of control here as I come in and I'm going to get even a bit more paint off of my brush and then it ha it comes sort of it comes out a little bit like that and I can pull this in and then at the corner like I said corners we're going we're going to really I've got to get a bit more paint now got to fill in the corners you don't want people's eyes going out the corner there and we're going to have the silhouettes at the bottom so don't worry too much about that and I'm just going to grab a little bit more paint on my brush and look at my picture and come in from the other side. I'm going to wet up my brush a little bit. I've gone into this blue that's that's over here. This. Prussian blue. I have to really think my brain goes to sleep. Um, I've got a little bit more water on my brush this time because I want it a little bit more solid towards the edge. Um, but then I'm coming in and now I'm getting a little bit more water on my brush so I can get a bit more paint here and come in because we're going to have the, the silhouette coming up here. And connect those a little bit 
we don't want to be too dark at this point because again you want that play of light and dark I'm going to have a lot of silhouette over the top of this that you don't need to worry about. I do want to get the edges filled, the corners filled, and that I'm going to get a bit more paint off of my brush. That dry brush look coming across here. And even more paint off my brush, just, just grabbing in my towel. And this. Just want a little bit more paper texture showing just here just kind of scrubbing and that's enough you don't want to overdo it as you want that nice light showing through and I'm still not sure if I want darker clouds down by the horizon but I've got to make a decision before I put the trees in because once I've got the trees in I can't really work on those clouds part of me thinks let's pull out a little bit part of me thinks it's a little bit a little bit too light down by my horizon so before I put the trees in I'm going to give it a dry and just put a little bit more cloud down here. So give me a minute while I dry that off. There. Now, the lesson is never work on damp paper. That's when you get a big mess. That's when you start lifting off paint, getting back, you know, water marks and stuff. It's a really bad thing to do just looks usually looks ugly always work on either completely like wet paper or dry paper has to be one or the other so I'm going to put my clouds in on dry paper the ones I want down here I'm thinking okay my light spot with my rays is here if I don't have a little bit of dark my rays aren't going to really show up so I'm going to work my clouds in with a damp brush I have all kinds of just messy colors here. This looks like a good color for some um, clouds. So let's um, let's put a bit of cloud through here. Just streak it through. Yeah, make it sort of cloud shaped. I want some coming through here too. I want my rays to come through some dark in places are you using a number six brush or your 10 i've got my number 10 in my hand right now carolyn oh. um so i don't fiddle too much um what i'm doing is i'm getting the color on and now i'm going to go i'm gonna have my number let's think i'm going for my wet brush i think i'm i think i use my number six for wetting clean clean water on it and not too wet so I'm just going to wet those edges of those clouds to make them a little softer. Working on dry paper will give you that dimension of cloud, you know, clouds in front of other clouds, clouds that are lower and closer. So a little fluffy top to them. And I've sort of got that, that purpley color, the, the gray that's got a little bit of um, a, a rose in it. I've, I've used rose. You can use alizarin crimson or rose. It doesn't matter. It's just that, like I said, the alizarin crimson does fade over time. They have found it's quite what you call fugitive. So sometimes it's a it's better to use a permanent color and quinacridone rose is a very permanent color but alizarin crimson they are making a permanent alizarin crimson now with a different formula i switch now I'm not even thinking about what i'm doing switch to my number six brush to put in some little clouds here and the slightly more prussian color go back to the purpley color 
So the other thing you can do is you can also use your soft brush if you want to soften in any of your streaky clouds. I'm just going to go back to my number 10 brush because I tend to get a little bit too, too fiddly with my other brush. And instead of using wet paper, you can use a wet brush to move the paint around. And of course, you do have to be careful that when you move the paint around, you move it into a cloud shape and not just swish it wherever. There is, there is a bit more sort of dark coming in up here. I'm going to try that on dry too, to again, give that sense of dimension. Clouds in front of other clouds. This time I'm going to use my number 10 brush, a damp, to soften those in. You can do a, you can do a lot of the work on dry paper with sort of scrubby brush strokes and a damp brush too. Which is why I kind of wanted to do this so you can see how you can add. Sorry, I've gone up here a little bit now. I've left you behind, I've gone up to the corner. I'm just showing you how you can use a dry surface and a damp brush to get a little bit more cloud showing. Let's get a little bit more pinky cloud. I've got a little bit more rose and ultramarine. Just, just adding a little bit more paint to the tray. Just want to get a bit more of a um, violety type cloud up here. And some, sometimes you can use your soft dry brush to get those in, and sometimes you can use a damp brush. When I'm using a damp brush, I like to get it fairly dry and use it on its side with a kind of a scrubby motion. If you're worried about damaging your good brushes doing that, then use a brush that's not quite as good quality. I, I've never damaged my good brushes so scrubbing on the side, but I am fairly careful. So let's go back down to the horizon. And do I think, do I think that I need just a little bit along the horizon, do I think? Going back to the purple again, because we've got the yellow down here. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll streak some in, a, just not in the middle, just from the side coming in, some little purple clouds maybe. Again, um, wet brush. You have to go in with your wet brush, pretty or damp brush, it's not really wet, pretty quickly. Otherwise, they'll, they'll dry up on you very, very quickly and you won't be able to soften them in. And this is when you can really just take your time and slowly pull back and look at it and think, where, where do I need a little bit more dark? Where do I need a little bit more emphasis? Where do I need a little bit more color? And go at it slowly, kind of adding a little bit at a time. And I, I think now that I've put a little bit of sort of purple along the horizon, I like that better. I feel like I've got a little bit more drama. The, the yellow is looking a bit more dramatic. This damp brush again, scrubbing that in. So um, I think, let's pull back a little bit. I think that's good for now, for playing with the darks and lights in the sky. It's, um, 
and I've got some dark that I can bring the, the rays through when we do them, which we'll do now because I think it's better to get those in before we put the trees in. We, we can have the trees over the top of the rays then. So what I'm going to do again, sorry about all the hairdryer nonsense. I'm going to make sure I have to make sure it's really dry before we scrub the rays out of there. I'm going to give you two methods for scrubbing out the rays. And one involves masking tape. So if you've got a little bit of masking tape somewhere, make sure you grab it. And one of them just involves Kleenex. You need a Kleenex or you can use a kitchen towel, but kitchen towels are kind of coarse. And, and my kitchen towels have a, a pattern in them. So sometimes when you use that, you put a pattern into your paint, which is lovely if you want a pattern in your paint, but Kleenex and tissues much softer. So a little bit of hair dryer nonsense. There we go, that's plenty dry enough and I'll zoom in so we can work on that area. Now, you don't want to be drawing in any of these rays or your imaginary sun. You have to keep it in your head and sort of imagine them where it is. And you want a cheap masking tape because that's pretty low tack. You don't want anything too, um, too strong because you're going to rip it off again in a minute. I'm going to imagine that this little area here is my, my sun. And so my rays have to come from that sun. And I want to try and get the angle right. Let's look at the angle of this ray. It's about, oops, stick to everything. It's about 45 coming down here. It's close as, if you can imagine that. If you've got this, um, lost my red pen, here it is. So this is our center line. This is our horizon line. And then if you dissect that pretty much in half, it's a little bit, little bit steeper. It's close to 45 degrees. Put that out of the way. So lost where my sun is now. So here we go. This is going to be the outside of my ray. I'm going to put that down. Oh, I wonder what that was. Something fell down. And... Let's make sure you can see what I'm doing. Now, the ray gets wider as it comes down towards the ocean. So you can, it, it's, you can see a bit of it out here, and then it gets wider. So you can angle your tape so that this is wider down here than up here. Get me? And then you want to... A scrubby brush. Now this one I got at Iron Oxide for a couple of dollars. It's my it's made by the silver company that made the silver black velvet, but it's one of their very cheap acrylic brushes. It's called a silver scrubber angle brush. Great for scrubbing out the paint. I have two other brushes that do that. A little softer. This one is called, um, it's by Rosemary & Co. It's called an Eradicator. And Rosemary & Co. are a really good brush company. Very short, soft, well, firm, soft stubble. And this one is a Billy Shoal Eradicator too, a little tiny one. So I'm, I'm, let's, let's start with the silver one, the silver one that's an acrylic brush. Clean water. I've just gone and grabbed a pot of clean water that's nice and clean. And a Kleenex, nice clean Kleenex. And then we're going to gently scrub down and then we're going to pull the Kleenex in the direction that you've scrubbed. So a little bit of scrubbing with the brush, pull down. If you have any type of little acrylic brush or little firm brush, be careful though, because I've got to the point now where I'm damaging the paper. Dab that off and stop because that's the limit of my paper. And then if you are not using cotton paper, you need to heat this tape with a hairdryer before you pull it off. Otherwise you are going to 
rip the paper but if you're using cotton paper it's fine so that was just kind of like three passes with the brush and the Kleenex now the other two I like to make a little bit softer I'm going to use the rosemary and co brush remember they've got to come from this Sun so I'm just going to come down not quite at um, perpendicular but just the slight angle but not the angle that one came down and so I come down gently with this little brush and then straight down with the Kleenex in the same direction I can see three distinct rays on the photo so the last one comes out this way a little bit again scrub scrub down scrape three times is enough your paper will give up after that and start to peel scrub and scrape there you go three rays of sun coming from you can even if you want to if you want to get a little bit more light there you can just dab a little bit more light but the, the photograph doesn't really show a sun it just shows the rays coming from behind the cloud so that's all you need and then we need to make sure that's I need to dry that quickly with the hairdryer because if I try and put any trees over the top of that again it's damp paper and I'll get a horrible effect especially now I have um, damaged the paper with my scrubbing and my Kleenex I mean I haven't massively damaged it you can't really tell but there is going to be surface damage there that that, um, that you don't want to have to make worse so again a little bit of hairdryer it's dry it only needed a quick dry because it wasn't wasn't very wet and it's ready to do the trees and then we're back to black folks we're gonna make that black again and going to need Definitely going to need my zero brush for the tops of the trees. All my references. And I need my ruler. Need to remind myself where the center of my um, picture is and to avoid putting a tree there. If you don't remind yourself of these things and make sure you make a note of it, you forget and you put stuff where you told yourself you were gonna put it. Well, I've put my pencil some, somewhere. Oh, here it is. I have no clue where it is there, I found it. Right, so let's go between my two bits of tape. It's about six inches, three inches. I'm gonna make a mark here. Three inches is the center of my paper. I do not want to put a tree there. I don't want to put a tree there. I'm not marking the paper, I'm marking the masking tape. So my, uh, let's put where I'm gonna put my, my first, one of my trees here. Well, this is tree number, tree number two, go about here. Then tree number three is gonna go about here. And tree number, one it's going to go about here so i i've kind of figured them out before i actually do any painting now i'm going to move tree number one over to here not there over to about here put a, put a little mark just a little mark there and number two and put a little tiny mark just to help me and three has got kind of like um, two tree tops. And then I want to make sure that one's taller than the other. I'm gonna look at my look at my other ones. So probably going to make um, this one and this one a little bit taller and this one a bit shorter 
So it would remind myself again where they're coming to. I'm going to invent a few others. They're not going to come over the horizon line though. There's, there's a little one. I'm just going to put them in. Little one here. Um, one there, one, one leaning over, one here, and a space in the middle. And then I need to mix up some more very dark paint. I'm trying to find the one I like the best of the ones I did. I think I like that one the best. Right. Protect your work. Get your paint. And let's mix up some black or something very dark. Just use the colours we've been using. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna is a great one. It's not going to be quite dark enough. Not too much water because that will lighten it up. And then I can put some sepia in there. That's a really dark, cool brown. And put some Payne's Grey in there if you have some. Very little water. That's the trick is to get it. Lots of pigment, very little water. Sepia, some Payne's Grey looking pretty you want it really nice and dark so it's going to be a nice dark silhouette now i'm getting a little bit of water so i can actually move it on the paper a little bit a little bit more of everything there we go a little bit of prussian let's just add everything in that we've we've thrown at this picture and a little bit of water. Move my protective barrier. Zoom in. Now, right hand dominant, so I want to start on the left so I don't make a big mess. I have my Arsh um, embossing here. I wouldn't normally put it there. I'd usually have it uh, bottom right if I was going to include it, but this is the fourth one I've done and I'm just about saving paper at the moment and not worrying about where it turns up. So I'm going to have my, I think I'm going to work with my number four brush and my zero brush. The zero is to do the nice th thin tops to the trees and the four and even possibly the six I'll have close by is to fill in the bottoms of the trees because if you fill in with a tiny brush you just get bitty bitty brush strokes oh I'm going to start over here and I'm I'm going to have a couple of again corners and sides you don't want people's eye to go skittering out the corner or the side of your picture so you need to do what I call blockers so I'm going to put a couple of trees in here that are going to be blockers I'm going to start with my zero actually and just that block is just going to come just over the top of the horizon just and what I usually do is I just start pulling the tree trunk down with the tip of my brush so I know where the tree trunk is going and then have the branches come out the side of that line that I've made. Beside it here again, have another tree because I want the eye blocked at the side of this painting. Nobody's eye is going to go out here looking for something else. Make sure you've got plenty of paint to work with. And I'm only working with a zero brush at the moment. Beside that tree, this one at a bit of an angle. It's coming over like that, a little bit of an angle. I don't know if I ever invented that or if that was in the picture. I have no idea. I'm looking at one of the ones I did. 
the branches need to be open to a certain point, getting my number four brush and starting to close up with a bigger brush, close up those branches and come down to my border. Now you need to connect before you go on. If you start the tops and connect later, you'll have a dry line where you stopped. Now I want to come down a little bit now because I don't want any more tall trees at this point. So a shorter tree coming this way. And you don't need to do a lot of detail. You just need to make sure that it has that tree look to it. You, know, you don't want blobs that don't look like trees. But and as you come down towards the bottom of the paper, you can connect. Again, we're not go we're not going up to the horizon with any trees until we get to this one. They're all going to be lower down. You can put that the trunk line in first. Small branches at the top. And Jill, who's in Australia, probably doesn't have many trees that look like this. So Jill, you can put Australian um, skyline in if, if you want to, whatever trees that you see on your skyline. And I know you've been to British Columbia, so if you want to have it look like British Columbia, you can put these fir trees in. Totally up to you and up to anybody else too. If you have a view from your window or a view you love that has a different silhouette, then do a different silhouette. Do what you like or what you see. I'm just, I, I'm pretty sure this guy that photographs these, most of his ones are done at Piper's Lagoon, so I'm pretty sure um, that's where this one is. He posts one nearly every day at Piper's Lagoon, and he must get up really early because most of his are done at sunrise. which is, I'm pretty sure this must be sunrise because you would only, looking out at Piper's Lagoon, you'd only get the sun there at, at sunrise. So I'm keeping a lot of the trees low down. Some of them, you don't see much detail. You just kind of see uh, pointy tops. And then I'm going to come back and do that uh, big one that's breaking the, the horizon line. Top in first, trunk coming down, back to my zero brush so I can really get the detail in. When you're doing your branches either side of your trunk, remember they don't come, they don't come either side evenly like this. The tree is round and some of these branches will be in front some will be behind, some will be um, branchier than others, there might be a space. It's got to be um, like a tree, not, not just like a, I don't know what I mean, like a cartoon of a Christmas tree. As we get down again towards the tape, towards the bottom, I want to connect Some of that silhouette. Put a slightly shorter tree next to it. Also, when you when you're connecting the silhouette, sometimes make some tree shapes at the edge of it so that if you come back with dry paint, you've got some real shapes to connect to. And I have one slightly off at an angle. Slightly at another angle. Bigger brush. So 
So these ones that are like not going to be tall trees in the center, we can't just have a space there. There still needs to be trees, but we don't see much detail. We see mainly uh, pointy tree tops. Probably um, there's quite a cliff at the end of Piper's Lagoon and you look down and you'll just see, looking down from the cliff, you'll just see treetops. So not much detail. I'm using my bigger brush to connect those a little bit. I know we're in the center, but I'm not going to do a big tree. I'm just going to do a couple of slightly taller trees. I don't mean that you can't put anything in the center. Of course, you've got to put something. I just mean don't put your big, your biggest focal point tree in there. Plan it so that it, it goes off to one side. And also most of my trees are standing upright, but not all of them. Some of them are just leaning slightly. Now I'm getting closer to uh, one of the taller ones that I want to do. So I'm going to put the taller one in and then fill in the space afterwards. And I like to start at the top. I don't know about you, but for me, that's just what works. Little tiny zero brush. I sometimes, when I'm doing the top of the tree, go even closer. I sometimes even leave a space before I go and do the, the, the start of the tiny tiny branches at the top. Maybe there's a even smaller one at the top there. Make sure I've make sure it's in focus now I've zoomed right in. It's having trouble zooming in that close and being in focus. I'm gonna, I've been looking at my painting. I'm going to look at his photograph for a minute just to get um, what can sometimes happen is you get into a rhythm of drawing your trees and then you tend to do them all the same because you've got into this rhythm of what you like doing and it pays to stop and look at a real tree or a picture of a real tree and actually get back to get back to what they really look like. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking at the photo, Jay's photo here. I'm making sure that I'm not going into a rhythm of doing exactly the same thing all the time. Beside this tall tree in his photo, there is a tree, comes up to about here. I'll zoom out again because it doesn't like being that close. It's not great at focusing that close. So I'll come down and use my bigger brush to get a few more connected branches in here and at this point if you haven't mixed enough paint just you know find a, a good place to stop stop with branches sticking out so that if you have to start again you've got a tree shape just mix some more paint it doesn't matter if it's exactly the same color that's okay 
And again, before I get to the big tall trees, I, I'm going to put some little trees in. Bring them in really quickly with my big brush. I'm not fussing about these ones, they're just in the distance. And then the one, the biggest, tallest one, I'm going to be here. It's not as thin at the top, the big tall one in the photo. It's a bit uh, branchier at the top. Still with my zero brush for doing this part. The tree beside it, I, I, as I come to that one, I'll fill that in too. So they kind of connect just like they do in the silhouette. You don't very often see the trunk in the silhouette, but it really, really helps to know where it is. Otherwise your trees are all going to be falling over wonky. Doesn't matter if a few of them are, you know, tipped over a little bit, but if they if they're all wonky, especially the big ones, gonna look a bit a bit drunk for your your viewer. And I'm, I'm kind of getting down to where the trees are going to connect at the bottom. So I'm being less tidy. I'm going to switch to my, my number four brush. I can do a bigger brush strokes down here. I mean, you could do it all with a number four brush or a number six brush if you wanted. Some people do everything with a big brush and don't worry about the big brush strokes connect everything before you get to the tape because you don't want big empty spaces close to the tape um, even in here I've got too much empty space connect that up mm. little tree here I don't think it's in the photo I just feel it needs needs that there But I want to see I want to see some of that ocean, so we don't want, want don't want too much in the definitely want something in the corner, but not too much, if you know what I mean. So I put some blobs in the corner there, and now I've got my tiny brush. I'm tidying them up a bit and giving them giving them a bit of a treetop look. Don't overdo it. You want it to to blend in. Now let's pull right back and then see the whole thing. So I, ha I hope you can see what I mean, that the, the sky is now drying, so it's looking a lot more unified. And now that we've got the silhouetted trees in, everything looks a bit more pulled together. And you've got the, the light contrasting with the dark. And I should, I'm just going to dry the trees quickly and then I'm going to take the tape off so you can see it without the mess of the tape. The mess of the tape's very distracting too. So let's quickly dry it and pull the tape off. Yeah, that's dry enough and it's given, given the tape, if you heat your tape, it comes off even easier with that. I've never had tape rip my Ash cotton paper, but it will rip 
some brands of paper definitely rip a pulp paper so be very careful but if you heat it with your hairdryer it will come off nice and cleanly I've got my little wrap around the bottom here and it, it looks so much better when you get all the mess of the edge of your tape coming out the way whiteboard away if I've got um, needs a dark piece of paper behind it to look good I'm just looking through my huge huge paper stash piece of navy blue there. I got a a bleed through on my paint through the masking tape there's two ways to fix that um, one is with I have a little sandpaper eraser somewhere probably downstairs in my calligraphy bag and this is a nail file so one way is to sand your paper hopefully with a you can buy a little sandpaper eraser for erasing ink off of paper. Of course, you could never paint on this paper after doing this. This is just your border if you want to get your border cleaner. My sand eraser would be much better. Uh, the other thing you can do is get your PH Martins white, that lovely magic fluid, and you can just paint over any little areas that that get damaged or have a little bit of bleed through if you want to keep it nice and clean and what I usually do is um, sign mine with a white pen grab one because I'm on I'm improvising on the fly here I don't really have all the proper tools handy I'm just grabbing what I can find but because I have white at the bottom of my paper I usually sign a little white dip pen or you can use a white um, uniball and just grab the little dip pen and some PH Martins white to sign on the black at the bottom or there's there's a number of different pens you can use little white jelly rolls fine I just think the PH Martins white stands out better let's pull back again so put that back on the navy it's okay I, I'll get there eventually I've got I've got so many now I've got um one two three four and they're all different. I struggled with all of them. Uh, but they're okay. Where did that go? I hope you had some success with your Stormy Sky. And now, I didn't like mine, any of them, when they were finished. But looking at them a few days later, and even weeks later, I like them better. So remember, give yourself some time. Put them away for a couple of days. Look at them when they're dry and when you have fresh eyes, and I think you'll like them a lot better. Thanks for joining me. See you again next week.